All right, so I hope that time of reflection was a blessing for you. We're going to do a few more of those types of devotional reflections uh, over the course of the next several weeks as we approach the um, awesome day of Christmas. Um, so by now, in your notes, you should have Advent info uh, filled out from the video that you watched. And uh, we're going to move on to the types of historical info that is helpful when considering past events. So you're probably wondering, why in the world did Mr. Flores have us do that strange activity um, looking in West Side um, yearbooks and looking online, doing research about Oregon and world events uh, that happened in your lifetime or when you were born, pardon me. Well, I, I think um, in my experience, and again, I only can speak to my experience, in the past 20 years, of having conversations with people about the resurrection. I can probably count on my hand the number of times I have had a real conversation with somebody that had considered the evidence of the resurrection and still decided not to believe in the resurrection, whether they were professors at Oregon State University or friends or family members. They simply have made a decision not to believe even after considering the evidence. That's a choice. It's their choice. But the vast majority, again, like I said, I only can count about, you know, no more than five of those types of people. The vast majority, sadly, have never even done the research of the resurrection itself, have never considered the evidence of the resurrection, and still they say, eh, it's nothing more than a myth. It's nothing more than a legend. And, and I hope that the video that we watched, the movie, The Case for Christ, as they went over in story form, the evidence for the resurrection, I hope that was encouraging to see how somebody had this kind of cynical, skeptical approach to Christianity. But then they, they looked at the evidence for themselves. And, you know, that, that question that haunted them, Lee Strobel, for such a long time. How much evidence do you need before you start to believe this to be true? Well, what historians do is what I had you guys do on Monday. Um, they, they look up past information and make claims about events in the past. And again, I had you do that work because it was a case study. You had to go and find information about Westside in a specific year. And we can all be confident that those things happened in those specific years. We can also be confident that certain events happened in Oregon uh, because things were written down in history and people verified it because there were eyewitnesses. Um, so a fun one that I always like to say in Oregon's history, I think most of us know that it was 1859 when Oregon became a state. And then, you know, we're a, we're a romantic state because it was February 14th, Valentine's Day, when we became a state, right? Um, but what, what, I, what I think is interesting about all of that is two things specifically that historians consider when they're looking at the details for the resurrection are some of the similar things that you guys considered, and you can see up on the board, um, I guess to my left here, uh, students in period two wrote down types of historical information that was helpful for them. Well, I wanted to make sure that we at least have these two, because these two are the most prominent as it relates to evidence about the resurrection. The first thing you should have written down in that section is, or in the note section, is data and earliest records. As somebody that looks at history, we want to consider the records that are closest to the actual events. That data can be trustworthy and reliable very important. And that's why I think the scriptures, unlike any other recorded document in human history, have been so well preserved for us. I would go on record saying, I do believe the Bible in and of itself, the Bible that we have the privilege of holding in our hands, is a miracle. The fact that it has been preserved so well and records so close to the actual event it is unprecedented compared to any other historical event in human history. And I'm going to share more on that in the class reading in just a little bit here. And then the second one is eyewitness accounts. Um, we can take somebody's word for it, 
especially those people who were martyrs in the first century, giving their lives for these testimonies that they were bearing um, in front of religious leaders, Roman soldiers. I mean, for the first 300 years of church history, it was filled with martyrs, people giving their life for this. And those first who were eyewitnesses in that first uh, 100 years of uh, church history um, until the death of John the Apostle in around 90 AD. And so they gave their life uh, to bear witness to these things. And I don't take that lightly that hundreds of people did that. I think that isn't just a phenomenon. I don't think it was a group of people hallucinating. I don't think it was a group of people who talked each other into, hey, let's go out and have fun this week by telling a big lie that's going to get us killed. I don't think people behave that way. Something different happened as a result of them seeing Jesus face to face. So those two things uh, historians consider, and interestingly enough, you consider the same thing in your uh, research of history, whether that was West Side history or Oregon history. You wanted data that was early records um, and you wanted eyewitness accounts. OK, um, OK, I think that's all I wanted to say for the types of historical info that is helpful when considering past events. Thank you. All right. You guys are going to do a class reading next. Um, and the substitute will pass out the packet. Uh, it should be there on the, my desk or that black stand right there at the front. All right, you're going to read that together. And then I have one more video for you in just a little bit here. Thank you, and we'll see you, in, see you soon.